Hello, eso es. We are live. How is everyone doing today? Good morning. Um, another live stream. We're doing another live stream. Yes, finally we're streaming in this week. I miss it, man. I'm I miss streaming every day. It's just life catches up to me, and I have to be realistic about the scheduling because if I say that I'm gonna stream every day and then I don't, you know, it's not cool, right, for everyone. Anyways, so yeah, today we're streaming, and Friday we're streaming, and today I'm gonna I'm gonna break down this cue that I made for my Tension Hip Hop album that I've been working on for a couple months now. I'm almost finished. I got like 16 tracks uh, approved. And this morning I woke up, I checked my emails and I got this email. I got an email from my music uh, library supervisor and they accepted this track. So now I'm going to play it for you guys. And then I'm going to break down the elements, um, the arrangement, kind of the thought process and the sounds. And then we'll get into a little bit of the mixing, you know, like my mastering shame. I will show you what I did there. It's kind of the same as all the other videos. So if you guys are really interested in making this type of music for TV and learning like the whole process of how to make music for TV, there are a bunch of media composers on YouTube that are amazing and are doing amazing jobs. And I always take inspiration from these people and so i want to be one of those people also that inspires so this is the reason why i want to you know go through this beat with you guys this cue and just show you kind of what i did and maybe inspire you to make one of these so i'm gonna mute my voice right now and i'm going to play the beat for you guys so give it a listen let me turn this on also just to looks nicer okay here it goes. This one is called Strange Voices. There it is, guys. This one is called Strange Voices. Um, really quick, this song, this beat is in 160 BPMs and in the key of C minor. And it's only 1 minute and 36 seconds around there. Not very long. Okay, um, let's go in order here. Or maybe I should start where, with what I actually started. And I actually started this beat with this pad. And it's just a one shot. It's just a, a one shot um, pad. And right here in the, the C note. That's what I started off with. 
sorry for the noise. And just basically, this it's just doing this. It's just doing this pad, you know. Just the root node and the fifth and the eighth, uh, the octave. That's all it's doing. Um, and on the channel, it just got some EQ, you know, taking off the low end and some of the high end also. And this song, uh, yeah, so this sound is from the Cymatics Key Testnet pack. It is a pack of one shots. So that's what I started with. And after that, I think what I did was this woody thing here. And this sounds like this. It's kind of an arpeggiator kind of thing with some effects. And then the delay goes crazy, right? So that sound is also from the Cymatics instrument, um, from the Cymatics pack, uh, Melody One Shot. Let me show you here. So I bought the Cymatic, Cymatics Duality license and they came with a whole lot of bonus samples. And one of the these packs is called Melodic One Shot Collection Sorcery. That's where I got it from. So you go here. And I went to the instrument section and I got this one, the, the woody one, it sounds like this. It's just a one shot. And, and this is just the, the sample here on my sampler. Just one, one sample, but what I did was I added an arpeggiator. So right now without the arpeggiator, this is how it sounds like. It's like it, 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 it like drowns or whatever, like it, it goes away. But with the arpeggiator, it does stay like on that rhythm note. See? Yeah, that's what is that's what I was going for. Just like a something in the background that's kind of perky, but also like just give it like this dimensional sound, you know, like it's in a in a different dimension. And what what is really crazy about this sound is that I added obviously some EQ. This is the EQ curve that I did for this sound. And then I added the Cymatics Illusion Delay, which I also got from that duality pack. And I was just playing around with the, with the presets and I got this one called Sonar. And it, it gives it that tail that sounds like frequencies like that are not normally in the sample because this sample is just like a wooden instrument, like hit once, right? So I'm going to play the sample I'm going to play again the this arpeggiated part without the delay. So as you can see it just stay all right there like ding 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 ding. ding. But then when I add the delay Like the actual delay gives it those little tails that go wow wow those little sounds in the, in like the, you you would think that it's part of the sample but it's actually the delay giving it that little ear candy to the sample let's listen again Yeah and lastly I added this kickstart to give it some side chain so without kickstart goes like really crazy but I, I was uh, after I mixed it I was like something is clashing here something is in the middle and it was that first hit so I just put a little side chain on it and now it sounds like this 
it kind of dugs at the beginning. It's kind of taking you somewhere, but it doesn't resolve. It just keeps going in the same loop. So I think that was the second sound that I created for this beat. And then I went ahead and made these um, strings. I'm going to play them from right here. And these are from Heat Up. I love using Heat Up. Heat Up is one of my favorite plugins. And it's the, from the expansion pack Street Cinema. And then it's the called Fast Intense, the preset. It's right here. Um, let's see if I can play something with it. This has a little latency, but yeah. This is how it sounds, those strings. And let me show you the, the pattern here. This is the pattern. It's kind of just like a C minor, a C minor arpeggio kind of melody, you know, like just the normal chord chord notes. And then we added this, this second one here, the two. And this is how it goes. That's it. And what I did was I layered that. I layered those strings with these other strings from the BBC Orchestra, from Spitfire Audio. The, the violins too with the pizzicato preset here. And these sound like this. Right. And both of them together would sound like this. Those are the strings played during the whole beat. And then moving on to this sound, the harp melody. Just something really simple just to give it like a little character in the back. Um, this harp melody also comes from the Street Cinema expansion pack and the preset is called Roman Days. And it's from the harps. And this is the, the pattern that I use for this part. Let's take a listen. Yep. Now let's listen to like the strings and the harp together. That's kind of the melodic part of this of this cue right here. The strings and that harp melody. And also, well, with the other sounds that I have, the pad and, and those stuff, like I'm not gonna get too crazy with it, you know? It's just simple music for TV dialogue. Even though there's nothing simple about making this music, but I, I try to keep it as simple as possible and then like work towards making it a little bit more complex in case it needs to, you know? You don't want to be adding a lot of stuff if it doesn't need th that other stuff. And moving on here, we got the 808. So this 808 um, is one, uh, one that I created just right here. I, I took this, this preset, this normal preset. This is like the default preset of Sublab. And I made these changes to the low pass. I changed it to a saw wave, the attack. Um, did a couple of things here and let's see if I can play something for you here. That's the, the 808 that I use for this for this cue. Um, let me show you the pattern that uh that i use so if you want guys like this 808 just pause the video here take a screenshot and try to you know use these parameters to make this type of 808 
Um, I'm actually gonna save that, man. I should actually save that into one of my own presets. So what you do, you go here, you go save preset. I'm gonna put it in Delia Mode's first 808s. And let's call this one Stranger. That's it. That's the name of the 808. It doesn't matter. You know, you don't gotta get too technical with it. Let me just play you guys now the the 808 pattern. This is the 808 pattern. So that 808 also is kind of one of a melodic element because it has its own little, you know, groove and it has its own little melody in, in it also it's, it's not just doing oh excuse me it's not just doing one note right there okay so moving on i have this impact sound that comes only at the one and i got it from also the cymatics uh pack and this one i got from the from this uh, accent pack called abyss Okay, and if we look closely here, this this one is called Light Impact. Now, I don't know if I got it from here or not. Or maybe it's from the Impact Effects. Let's see. Oh, sorry about that. So I got also this effects collection called Lunar. And see, we got some stuff here, like cinematic stuff. And so... This sound comes from the effects collection Lunar, and I go here to Light Impacts, and this one is called Light Impact Hill, so it's this one. That's the sound. Is this one? That's the sound of the light, light Impact Hill. It sounds creepy. It sounds like dark and ominous. <laughs> so that's why I used it. Um, I have no processing on it. I just put it a little bit to the left on the mix and that's how it sounds uh, right later when I play the beat again we'll listen to it in context you know what else do we have here for the melodic elements so here I have a lead going on it's also another one shot from the cymatics pack it's called keys wavy okay let's look it up over here this because I want to show you guys everything that's going on here, you know. Keys wavy. This is the one. That's the sound. That's the sound that I'm using for this lead kind of um, arrangement here. What I did, just send it to a little reverb and some EQ right there. I don't want it to be too harsh. Harsh sounds are not good for TV. And let me just play you this whole section right here because there's three things that I did, I think, with this. There's two things that I did with this sample here, with this, I'm sorry, with this instrument, with these sounds. So let me play you this lead part. It already has like that kind of delay. I, I added more delay here with my sampler. So this is what it's doing. Let me show you the pattern. You can see the notes. It's just like on the upbeat, just on the upbeats. And let's listen to that in context here because I just use it in this part and then I use it at the end. Let's just listen to it with the with the pad. And the 808, let's put the 808, let's put this whole section on. See the 808 coming in. We got the woody thing in the background. This is like the bridge of the song. 
here I come back with the strings and and the lead I take it down an octave as you can see for just that part right there just to give it a little bit more ominous feel you know and that would be like the bridge of the part of the of the of the cue well next up we have these brass sounds now these brasses are just to like accent and give it like a more orchestral feel because like um i love adding the brass just gives it more cinematic touch i guess and more epicness and i'm just using my trusty um brass tab from spice which i found on splice for serum it's a, a splice preset for serum and splice presets can be pretty cool so these brass tabs do this just in the one right there yeah just like giving a little accent a little epicness and here we do the same thing but it changes a little bit coming into the last bars yeah and I added just added some reverb to it, some pro EQ also. Give it a little high shelf there. Give it some air. Um, we're gonna be going into the drums at the end. Right now, I'm gonna also enter into these these effects. I'm gonna play them all at once with the brass, so that we have some context. It's just a whoosh that I found on Splice and these horns. Um, let me see. Okay, we gotta talk about these horns for a second because these horns come in right here at the verse. So I feel like I should play you the beat here because since we go on arranging, then new elements are gonna be coming in. But let me just show you that these horns these are war horns. This is a sample pack that I found on a website thanks to one of the sync licensing courses that I took and they gave us a whole lot of sound packs. And this was one of the sound packs that they oriented us. And so I searched it and I found it. And so it's just like really crazy horns that sound like medieval. Let me see if I can find um it's Nordic War Horns. That's the name of the of the pack. I'm gonna just play you some stuff. Sorry for your ears. But this is it. They have all these sounds like for these horns like this. And so you just have to I don't know, pick one find the key find the, the tone where it's at the pitch and then like try to to match it up like this one after i i detected the chords with studio one it was like d sharp um i didn't know i think it was like yeah it was d and so since i am in c minor i just needed that d sharp to to like actually have a third the third note of the c minor scale and so I just transposed it a half step up and now it sounds like this. I could probably just take it up a bit. Always remember to save your project. Those are the Nordic war horns and you're gonna see when it comes down into this verse how I use them just in the background. It's just background noise and I just want the, the, the drums to, to cut through a little bit there. Okay, so let's let's go into what what other uh, I don't have any more effects here. Actually, just a reverse crash over here and that whoosh. And now we're gonna come and talk about the talk about the drums. Okay, so let's start with with the first one up here, the kick. And this is what the kick kick is doing. This is a cymatics also. I, I used all cymatics samples for this beat because I've been using um, the pack that I bought, which is since 
is is ready for for sync licensing. So this is the kick and this is the pattern. Let me just play it for you guys. Yep. Yeah. That's the that's the kick. Um, let's go to the clap. Also, another cymatic sample is called clap ghoul. This is how it sounds like. It sounds like a snap, like something's breaking actually. And this is the pattern, just straight third on the third. Nothing, nothing really wild here for the clap. We're going to the snare. The snare is a little wild because I did a couple of of breaks here and there. But it's also another cymatic sample. So I got all my cymatic samples um, organized here on impact. And uh, this sample, let me see if I can find which one it was here. So I used a couple of snares. As you can see, I used this snare. I use this one and I use this one just to give variety man just like I don't want it to sound just like a normal cue so I'm gonna play this pattern now this is the snare pattern That's the snare pattern right there. Very, very simple. Not, not something out of the craziness. Just the craziness is the different snare sounds that I use. And then I just throw them into a bus and process them all the same. So you, you, you kind of hear that it's different, but you got to listen to it. And then I got the hi-hats, also another cymatic sample, hi-hat ozone. I use I like you putting into my sampler because I can do some some pitch stuff. So this is the the pattern of my of my hi hats. Let's listen to that. Crazy, just crazy, and it, it just the same thing, repeats. Crazy hi hat. <laughs> um, we got this perk section also. So let me go here. I'm not using much of the these perks. This is the perk that I'm using, all cymatics. That droplet. This and this. Let's play that perk that perk um section. Yeah, it's crazy. That's all for the per game. I mean, right now you're gonna be listening to it. And you're gonna be like, uh, "What are you doing, dude?" But wait till you hear it with the the, the whole section, okay? Then I got the open hi hat right here. Just another normal cymatics um, sample. Cymatics got a great sample. This is what it's doing. Just on that up beat. And then last but not least, we got this crash going on, which also. I used it as a reverse crash um, over here, entering this last, that last little bit there. So those are the drums, nothing really crazy, nothing crazy. Let me just play the whole, this whole drum section right here for you. That's the drum section right there. Like, you know, it's groovy, it's kind of nice, okay? So now that I've talked about all the elements, I've shown you where I got the sounds from, the, the, the one-shot sounds, the, the presets that I used and everything, um, the way that I sound design some stuff, I already showed you, showed you that. You can now know, stop the video now, go back and see how I did it if you wanna you know, try it out. 
But let's go now into the arrangement. So we start really quick, just like a little four bar intro with just the, the 808, the strings and the, the harp melody and the lead melody. Everything is doing this little thing at the beginning and also the snares. The snares are doing this. I use these two. Oh, sorry, there's uh, somebody always um, cutting grass in my house, like always, and I can never have some peace and quiet. Sorry about that. I'm gonna try to work uh, around it. So we got this at the beginning. That's the intro right there. See the, the snares? So now we go right into that hook. Okay, so after the, the hook, obviously the first part of the hook does not have the arp. The arp comes in the second part right here. And so, I, so to transition into that verse part, I just did this little fidgety, I don't know how it's called, like, it's just a little. And just everything doing that, heat up, everyone. So now this is the verse part, we, we have the horns and we have those pads, snare, hi-hat and perks, that's it. Bring in the kick and bring in the lead. The lead. So you can listen to how the snare is creating this little transitions to like what I'm trying to do is edit have edit points for the editor. So when the editors come, they have places where where they can cut. Okay? So right here the snare does something right here. Here we uh, again we enter with the letter with the melody with the lead and the kick. Another nice eight eight bars. Okay, so you can see that the snare does again a little run here. Nice. And so then we come into this breakdown before going into the big hook, and this breakdown only has the clap the bass and here is when where the woody arpeggiated sound comes in that's it and the lead here i turned it down an octave as i said earlier this is like the the build up and the snare is doing this thing this different thing so it had more build up And then we come into the hook again with that reverse crash and everything. And obviously the sting at the end. So we do the fidgery. And the sting is just the kick with the 808 and the strings, the brass and the harp just doing the same chord that, that it's just a C chord, but it's just octaves. And it just hits right there. So, and just finishes right there like an epic kind of sound, you know? 
So that's the arrangement of it. It's only one minute and something, one minute and 36. And now the mixing, well, you, my blue section, this whole blue section are my drums. For the kick, um, this is kind of what I did to the kick. This is what I did to the clap. This is what I did to the snare. You know, these are the curves that I'm using because I'm, I'm not doing much to it. I'm just taking out the low end on all these tracks. See, this is the hi-hat. I took a, a bit of the high end there because they were really harsh. The perks, perk, all these are perks. Now this perk, I, I boosted a little bit because I, I needed it to cut through the mix. On um, the crash, just taking a bunch of low end. This is the 808, the strings. This is the string layer, a little bit of the, um, I boosted a shelf right there at 2.7K for the strings. This is the harp. We got the pad, we got the lead, we got the arp section. Well, the arp section, let me, we already saw this, but yeah, you get the gist. It's, uh, it, all, all I do on the tracks is correctional EQ, take out the low end or harsh frequencies or whatever. And this is how I level them. This is the leveling, the kick, starting the kick, the clap, the snare. And as long as panning goes, as far as panning goes, I just pan the perk uh, towards the right a little bit. This, the, um, and the other perk towards the left. Let me see something, which one is to the right or the left? Let's see something. So, see? The boom one is towards the left and the little high one is towards the right. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. And then moving on to the to the 808, I have it right in the middle. Um, this is the EQ curve. I also added Cymatics Voltex. A oh, Voltex is called? A vortex? Yeah, it's an 808 kind of saturator plugin and makes my 808 sound really hard like without it this is how it sounds let me let's listen that's without the vortex sounds pretty good but with the vortex wait until it comes around with this is with the vortex gives me much more harmonic value and also a little bit more of the low end it's hard, man. I love that plugin, and it was it was practically free because after I bought the Cymatics Duality license, they gave me a hundred and fifty dollar gift card, and I bought two amazing plugins. I bought that one, and I bought the Diablo, which I'm going to show you soon because I put it on my drum bus. Um, what else is there here to like kind of explain? I already explained the ARP section. Um, I've already explained some of the reverbs that are going in, like the lead. This is the reverb that I'm using for the lead. It's just my reverb channel. My bus FX channel is always the same. And then I got the moon verb, which is um, a preset that I found on Slate Digital. And I have one of my horns going to, to that. Makes it feel like it's actually in the moon. Um, and moving on... Um, we're still in the mixing process, right? So, so yeah, those are, this is the leveling, this is the panning, and this is kind of what the effects that, that I put on, on my channels. Also, I'm side chaining the, the 808 to the kick so that it cuts through. Now, the real mixing comes here on the, on the bus channel. So this is my drum bus, and what I have on my drum bus is just this Pro EQ cutting out more low end and high end. And then I got the Cymatics Diablo plugin, the drum enhancer. I used the drum bus add body, and I played a little bit with the punch part, the frequencies here. I, I lowered one dB on the highs because those, those high hats were going a little crazy. So without this Cymatics Diablo, it really, it really gives it a, a difference, man. Like for the drums, like I swear. Let me just play the drums here for you guys. 
this that's with the cymatics this is without the diablo very much lower 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 but now with the cymatics diablo everything you can understand it way much better i also took out a little bit out of the output gain of the signal because i didn't want to be clipping nice and okay so that's that's what i did on the drum bus after the drum bus um what i did was the bass bus now the bass bus i added some infinity eq take out the some of that rumble low end added the virtual mix rack just the, the vcc channel and this stress compressor you know it's not doing much it's just doing that and then i added this compressor for shy side chaining so i'm actually side chaining from the drum bus and that's how the the bass sounds and then lastly the instruments all these instruments all the ones that are in purple and pink um i just added some virtual mix rack this is the the rack that i used vcc fgn fg116 and then the revival um let's go to just the the instruments let's take out virtual mix rack this is how it sounds and now with the virtual mix rack This tames it, tames a bunch, the sounds. And takes out a bit of that. I really wanted to take off a bunch of the low end, so I'm taking out a bit of a hundred, I'm gonna take it down a little bit, a hundred, a hundred hertz, whatever, you know? And that's what I'm using on the instrument bus, as you can see. And that's all I did for the mixing of my instruments. Then I go into my main bus. Now I'm going to turn these off and I'm going to be adding them one by one. So let me play. Let's just repeat this last part here. I'm getting text messages. I got to finish this because I got a video that I got to do. But yeah. So first thing I added to my master, to my master track or my master fader here is this EQ curve and I'm mid mid siding the this EQ you know it's just a little trick that I found I'm still working on it because I don't understand it well but the way to understand it is just practicing with it and doing like really exaggerated curves and trying listening to those differences and the frequencies and and just whatever feels good to you whatever sounds good to you it's okay there's no rules so let's play the track there's nothing on the mastering right now so it's gonna sound lower let me turn on this infinity eq that's kind of what it's doing it's not doing really much it's just taming a lot and then i added the virtual mix rack the FG bomber, the virtual mix bus, and the trimmer. That's it. Just adding some excitement. And then the fun part is here at the FGX2. Here's where it really sounds hard. This is just the limiter. It's my favorite limiter right now. And you can see I used the deep punch preset, but then I adjusted the threshold here. I gave it some low punch. 9.45 of input gain and then the ceiling is at negative one i also use true peak limiting and i love it i love this plugin because it also gives me like a visual um, presentation of what's going on so let's play again we're not doing much here we just put in 2 db of, of compression See the loves are in negative 12. And 
then last but not least, I have another limiter at the end. This one is the stock limiter from PreSonus. And I'm just have it at negative 0 0.05 with the soft clip engaged. And I just, I just don't want my signal to go over no, uh, zero, you know, no clipping at all. Just if it goes to 0 0.020, then that's the, the, the loud it's gonna get, you know? And with this, you can even pump it up even more. Because as you can see here on my master, I'm, I'm just clipping at negative 0.1, negative one. But if I took it up, we're now hitting at negative 0.15. And we're not having, not even that much of gain reduction here. And just to collaborate, we're gonna put our, our loudness meter. So here we're hitting a negative, negative seven of loves. And short term is negative 10. Even take it up more if you wanted to you know but right now I think it's pretty loud the momentary loves go to negative 7 that's pretty good you know you want to get to like negative 8 and short term negative 10 negative 11 is pretty good also from what I've learned That is it guys that is the cue strange voices that i made for music sculpture uh, music library they accepted it they just had one request for it one revision and it was that they wanted the hi-hats to be more present so what i did was i just took the hi-hat volume fader and pulled it up that's all you i needed to do really and now i feel like the hi-hats are more present don't you think <laughs> I did some little adjustments there with the EQ and stuff, but yeah. Um, but that's how it is. That That is what it is. It's just a one minute and 30 something second EQ um, made for TV dialogue. So I hope that you guys learned something from this live stream today. Um, I'm always doing these, kind, these type of videos and always the beats are kind of different. And just and an, it, this is an, an educational purpose, you know. So if you really like this, you know, give that like bu like button a, a touch. You know, click that like button on this video. Subscribe to it. You know, share it with your friends. Share it with other professionals who want to learn more about sync music and how to use Studio One because that is something unique about me is that I use Studio One. I know that a billion people use Studio One, but um, I haven't found other live streaming channels using uh, Studio One that much. So this is how you make epic orchestral hip hop music in Studio One. And if you like it, just subscribe, hit that like, share it with your friends, you know, so that we can keep growing. Um, you help me grow and I'll help you grow also with these tutorials. And remember, we're always streaming on Wednesdays and Fridays in the AM. Today I did a little earlier because I got to do a video, but it's normally at 10, 11 AM that we do the streaming, just breaking down beats and breaking down production techniques. And in, in future videos, I'm going to also show you how to organize sections and stuff like that. So thank you for all the people who came down to the stream. Um, appreciate you all and as always have a great day and peace